Today's project is going to be a puzzle type cutting board. We're going to take this leftover chunk of maple, one and three quarters inch wide, and we're going to take this chunk of black walnut, which is also one and three quarter inch wide. We're going to cut some geometric patterns into them. Then we're going to put them together and see what we get. First thing we need to do is rip this into one and three quarter inch square stock. For that, we'll use my table saw. Once we get our blade set, we'll also rip this piece of maple into one and three quarter inch stock. Now that we have our stock ripped to a one and three quarter inch square, the next thing we're going to do is cut a quarter inch groove down all four sides in the center of this block. If my block is one and three quarters inches wide, half of that is seven eighths. So I need to set my saw blade so that seven eighths is in the middle of the kerf of the blade. Here's what it looks like when you get done cutting the groove in all four sides. For this next section, we are going to be slicing off this portion here. Reset your fence so that the outside of the blade is one quarter of an inch away from your fence and that it's seven eighths of an inch to the top. That way we can peel off the excess that we want. After making your cuts, your block should look like this. Now that I have my pieces all cut in the same geometric shape, I'm planning on having a one inch thick cutting board when I'm finished. Knowing that I'm going to have to run it through the planer and sand it down a bit, I set my saw bench stop at one and an eighth of an inch. It gives me a little extra room. Now we'll just cut these into one and an eighth inch blocks and we'll be ready for our next phase. And when you're all done cutting, you end up with a pile of blocks. Now let's put them together so we can see what our pattern is going to be like. Now that we've cut all our blocks, let's put them together in a nice pattern. We will alternate black walnut and maple. Black walnut and maple. And there will be a small void here, which we will fill with epoxy later on. 
And that's what our pattern looks like. Just repeat the pattern over and over again. Alternating your colors so that you end up with something that looks just like that. After you get done cutting them, put them all to interlock like that. That's what you should look like. I alternated mine, maple, black, walnut, maple, black, walnut. You could do it row by row, row of black, walnut, row of maple. These are all the rows from our puzzle cutting board. And thinking of how I wanted to glue them together, I'm going to run a single line down each one of these and then put them together. Since we're going to be pouring epoxy over top of everything to fill in the holes, I think a single line will be sufficient to do what we want. And the epoxy will finish the securing the pieces together. Okay, let's turn these and get them together. Ah, that's not gonna help us out any at all. I was hoping to avoid such a catastrophe, but uh, we'll recover. Yeah. As they say, the best laid plans of mice and men go astray. And I think my best laid plan has definitely gone astray. I started out with my parallel clamps to get it together. I'm going to put two smaller pieces on either side to keep them pulled. I put together a standard epoxy pour form. The bottom is MDF with masking tape over top of it and then all the edges have been sealed with white silicone caulk. I like to use the silicone white because I get to see where it's at. Here's our puzzle and it fits down in there just perfectly. Our piece fits in here perfectly. I have put two blocks to hold my wood down when I pour the epoxy in place. And I have two other clamps that are there just to keep my balance. I'm going to be using the West 105 epoxy resin along with the 205 hardener. For our color, I'm going to be using the Black Diamond Purple Haze. It may seem like an odd choice, but purple against those colors will look very nice when finished. We're ready for our epoxy pour. I have calculated that I need almost a liter of epoxy, but this is not a deep pour epoxy, so I'm going to have to do it in two stages. So we will start with a little over half a liter and pour that in and then we'll finish it up from there. I want to make sure I fill these holes so I'm going to pour on top of my work first to be sure they're filled before I get the outside. We'll let that settle in fill in all the holes. Once I stop getting bubbles coming up, I know that my holes are filled. And then I will push the rest of the epoxy off 
into the side channels. After pouring the epoxy on top and letting it settle in for a while, I took my scraper and I just cleaned off the top, scraping all of the excess onto the sides. Like my calculation stated, I'm going to need to do a second pour, but I didn't want to make it too deep because it's not really a deep pour. Well, we'll let this sit for about 12 hours and then we'll mix up some more and fill the remaining holes and bring the edge up to this surface. This is our second pour. I just made a small cup. I hope it's enough. We'll find out. It's been sitting for a while. You can see some of the bubbles that have risen. We'll knock them out with a torch before we pour. Again, I'm going to start my pour in the center so I can be sure to get my holes and then we'll squeegee everything out. First guess is that I did not make enough. What? What? Oh, a little short on epoxy. I'll have to make another small batch. Our epoxy has had seven hours to dry. It looks pretty good. Although I'm going to have to come back in and fill a couple of the holes which sunk or had bubbles in them and popped. These little bubbles here I'm not worried about because I have to sand all this flat. I pulled out the screws all the way around. Let's see if we can't get the frame to come loose. Taking the bottom off, I like to use wooden wedges. They work very well. Of course, the bottom's all going to get planed off anyways, so it's not, a, not an issue. Okay, now I need to just sand and put on a table saw and cut it square. This is what our board looks like after planing it down on the top and the bottom side. So you can see there's a couple holes here that I need to fill and one really big one right there. The second one over here. This one looks deep, but it's not. I cut, uh, cut the edges clean. So, now we just need to sand this down some more so we can get this epoxy looking nice. Our board is progressing along fairly nicely. It's sanded. I put a double bevel on this edge so that you can see these little triangles. It almost looks like arrowheads on this side, on that side. So it looks really cool. I'm going to stop right here and fill all of these holes with a little bit of purple epoxy before I go any further. And there's a couple of nooks here that I 
little divot there and there that I have to fix too. So we're going to fix this board so there's no Mars in it. And then after that, we'll come back and sand it back down to its final shape. I have sanded this entire board. Beautiful. Makes the black walnut pop. Gives the maple a nice color of contrast. I'll let that soak in for a while, and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Here we are at the end of our puzzle cutting board project. Um, turned out very, very well. As you can see, the design's nice. The maple is very well highlighted, the black walnut, and the edge from where we poured the epoxy has some really interesting shapes. Put a couple feet on the back of it, and this project is ready to go for sale. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button down there. If you really like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel.